Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. South African climate scientists are warning that the opportunity to adapt will become harder in future as the country and the region become hotter and drier. Terence Krumer joins me to unpack the implications of the latest IPCC report for South Africa. Hi, Terence. Hi, Chanel. The latest IPCC report holds some worrying implications for South Africa. The South African climatologists that participated in the drafting of this latest IPCC report have warned that South Africa and the region are, uh, the temperatures here are rising at about twice the global average. So we know that at the moment, uh, the world has risen to 1.1 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. That's the measurement. So we are warming at a, at a faster rate than that. And while the rest of the world, especially the Northern Hemisphere, is going to get warmer and wetter as uh, climate change takes hold and as temperatures continue to rise, South Africa and the region are part of a, a conglomerate of countries and, and territories that are going to get hotter and drier. Now, the problem for us is that we are already a semi-arid uh, territory, um, so that as you get warmer and drier, there's obviously major risks and much more difficult to adapt because there's very little water in the system or precipitation in the system. So the, 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 the sort of real concerns here is that we're going to have more multi-year droughts and heat waves, which will, could affect major industries like cattle farming and, and maize crop farming. And we could also have heat waves that, have, that affect human health and also lead to death. As we've seen in the Northern Hemisphere this summer, we've seen a few of those heat wave or heat dome incidents where there's been death. And uh, we can also see much more intense and frequent tropical cyclones, particularly on the East Coast. So hitting particularly Mozambique and Maputo, hitting Richards Bay, those sort of territories. So those are the sort of risks that, that sort of confront us already at the 1.1 degree world. But as we know, we continue to warm. It's a bit like driving down the highway. We may be putting on the brakes in terms of decarbonization, but we haven't made the U-turn yet. We've got a, a risk of missing the off-ramp. So we, we really are in a, a, a difficult state. And what this report shows is that it actually makes sense for South Africa to take this very seriously. We have huge risks that are facing, and it makes sense for us to mitigate carbon emissions, even though it's a global, global problem and most of the emissions haven't been caused by us. There is a particular risk of a day zero drought in Gauteng. Yes, so this risk of multi-year droughts and heat waves concurrently occurring, which will be quite devastating, as a risk for South Africa of these day zero type events. We know that Cape Town came close, I think, in around 2018. And we know that Gauteng also came close in about 2015-16, where our oil dam system felt below 25% of its capacity. So th that, was a, a, that was a really key threshold because if it had gone below that towards a 20% level, it becomes much more difficult to actually keep that thirsty and very populous province of Gauteng, you know, watered and wet. And, uh, you know, they say at the 20% level, if it falls below that sort of threshold, the water quality issues become major and it becomes very difficult. The pumping uh, also becomes very difficult. So the, the, this is a major threat. And although it's not seen as an imminent one, as we know, it's been fairly wet over the last few seasons. In the next 20 years, uh, one of the climatologists from Witts University, Francois Engelbrecht, has warned that this is a, a real risk and that we, as Gauteng and as South Africa, given the importance of Gauteng to the economy, really need to start making as many preparations as possible to, uh, to adapt to this threat. What are the implications for the country in the run-up to COP26? Well, I think the main implication for South Africa is that this is real and it's serious and the implications for our economy and for society and human health are very serious. So it makes sense for us uh, to mitigate carbon emissions. This is the only lever that you have to reduce this rate of warming, that, that we have to reduce uh, the, the amount of carbon emissions that are flowing into the atmosphere. There's already a big stock. And it seems clear from the IPCC report that we have a remaining budget. If we want to stay below 1.5 degrees centigrade above um, uh, pre-industrial levels, 
uh, if we want to do that, we've got a, a carbon budget left of about 400 gigatons. And in a world where we we are emitting about 40 gigatons every year, that means we've already got a 10-year window to stay within the 1.5 degree uh, threshold. So it's looking precarious, but it is still within our power. And South Africa can contribute uh, because we are such a carbon intensive economy. And fortunately, many of those carbon emitters are coal-fired power stations, which are old and unreliable and we need to be replaced anyway. So there is an opportunity to start transitioning to cleaner uh, in, uh, uh, power generation technologies. And the, the additional good news is those uh, cleaner power generation technologies, uh, which would be a combination of solar, wind, and flexible generators or backup generators to deal with the variability are also now a cheaper overall for the system and a less water intensive. And we see how important water is going to be in South Africa in the future. So we have to get our policy thinking aligned. I think that's where the big risk at the moment, we don't have a, an energy policy that fully aligned to mitigation. And without that, it's going to be hard to raise some of the climate finance we want to do some of the mitigation and adaptation. The other big thing is to prepare our narrative as we go into COP26 around adaptation finance. We know that the world committed to $100, million, $100 billion a year in climate finance for developing countries, but that money has been slow to materialize. And there seems to be a growing commitment to that. As uh, Minister Barbara Crecia said in the run-up to COP, we need that to be far larger uh, as we approach that 2030 sort of window of opportunity, as we said, it's about a 10 year window that's going to close if we don't do major mitigation, uh, but also adaptation. We need to get some money into the system for adaptation so that we can deal with threats like a day zero Gauteng drought. Uh, we need to start preparing for that. What does it mean for the country that we're going to get so much drier and so much hotter? We, you know, we're going to have to find solutions for that ways to adapt, not just to mitigate by lowering emissions, but to start adapting is important and we're gonna need finance for that. So all in all, it's our policy alignment that has to come into play. It hasn't, re we haven't really got there yet. And I think there is growing commitment to that, but there's urgency because COP is only a, a couple of months away now and we need to have our, our story very clear by then. And there still seem to be a number of loose ends on that score. And then I think also to have our mitigation and adaption, adaptation plans that can be presented to financiers and have that ready as well. So there needs to be urgency, there needs to be some speed. And I think if we act, there's actually an opportunity here for South Africa to become a, a, a really a leader, not just a climate change hotspot, which we are, uh, and that's a threat, but there's, a, there's an opportunity to be a, a leader in terms of mitigation and, and adaptation. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.